Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. <laughs> And I am super elated to be scrutinizing another Lindy Hop competition today. This time, it looks like we are going to down by the riverside in Bilbao. I absolutely love this region of the world. It's one of my favorite places to go. Do not let your hearts be troubled. I will be telling you the absolute truth about who I think is the winner of this competition. So if you are someone who gets triggered by the truth, boy, I don't even know what the level is going to be. Here we go. You know it's good when there's bearded men. Okay, what just happened to my internet? All right, what I'm looking for so far are those little unique, quirky, independent, special qualities that make these dancers stand out. And you can typically see that on these warm ups. These are meant to kind of give us a snapshot and give dancers a time to kind of warm up a little bit to kind of give cues to their partner like, hey, this is what I'm going to lead. Be ready. <laughs> I never did that to my partners. They were always terrified to dance with me because they just didn't know what was going to happen. And there's something just morbidly satisfying about terrifying your dance partner and it work out. Nice band. This is a solid band. I wonder what the audience actually thinks. There's a lot of people just kind of standing like this. I wonder if they're saying, man, I wish I could have made this or I want to dance that well. All right, they got names on this. I'm not even gonna look because as soon as I look to write them down, I miss something. All right, here we go. First couple. <clears throat> I love her haircut. That's really cool. Okay, I don't like this. I, I don't like it. They can clearly dance. Um, the stylings are all derivative of other dancers that are really popular right now. If you, if you don't know who those dancers are, you wouldn't know. You would be looking at these dancers as unique. But that's not the truth. And I'm criticizing mainly the leader. The followers, she's in the pocket doing what she's got to do to follow it. But stylistically, I did not like the leader, uh, his movements in that one. Okay, I've never seen uh, this couple before. I've never seen her before. Never seen him before. <clears throat> what I like is the energy level uh, of the leader. And I like the contrasted, uh, relaxed control of the follower. She's just going with it. Both of them clearly have the objective part of swing dancing, which is the technique. They got it. So they, they were, they're winning so far. All right.
Okay, I like the fact that you can tell the leader heard the music coming up and there was a temptation to keep moving, but he decided to stop and his follower had the visual cue and they both accentuated the music well. So I love when they do that. Not just keep like moving on top of the beat. Okay, again, this is like the first couple. I don't like the leaders dancing because it's derivative. I don't really see him. I see him acting like other leaders that are kind of popular right now, which is a shame because it makes me angry and then I lose attention where I'm not looking at the follower. I like her the best so far. It's like a cute playfulness and she's not doing too much. Okay. I really like this follower. I really like this follower. She, she's clearly aware of how to control her body and improvise at the same time. But I also like her choices on how she's improvising. Okay, so far, this is my favorite leader just because I, see, I can see his personality. He's not afraid to just be kind of weird and quirky and uh, rock that with support. And she's, she was totally comfortable with him doing that. She's like, all right, I'm going to go with it. This is my second favorite leader so far. Just because he's he's keeping up his energy, which is the personality he showed me at the beginning. So I see some consistency. And she's having a good time. I can tell she is right with him.
All right. Let's talk about this one. Okay. Uh, first things first, I got to jump right into the part that I believe is the most objective aspect of judging competitions. And you all know me by now. That part is the control. I use that word control and it just simply means are the dancers able to control the technique doing their exclusive role? So can I see leaders give energy to followers and followers receive the energy and follow in a way that doesn't get in the way of leaders? Can I see leaders give energy to the followers and not get in the way of the followers? Right? So it goes both ways ways. The harder thing to judge is the followers in a competition because honestly they have to work with what is being suggested and aesthetically wise sometimes the leaders don't make really good choices so that it, I can see how well the followers can react to improvised situations. So I'm going to say right now th the followers in this competition in my opinion were more skilled as dancers than the leads as a whole. If I'm looking at the average, uh, my favorite follower, I don't know, yeah, I don't know their names because I was looking. She had like a like a pink kind of flowery looking shirt. Oh, she's kind of, kind of brown hair that goes short. She was my favorite. She was my favorite. Um, of course, I look for those objective things. There's a co four concepts that we talk about in our school, but one of the main ones that I look at um, is being able to not create energy. Because clearly, if two people create energy, it's gonna cancel and you're gonna see uh, frustration, either with the leader trying to reset something up or the followers you know, getting frustrated because it doesn't feel comfortable. But I could tell this follower was completely comfortable. There was none of this ready for swing out, ready to do the next turn, ready to hit the next move. Her natural disposition wasn't that at all. And I'm not sure if I can accredit that to her personality or not, but whatever she was doing, it was coming across as authentic and natural. And I just happened to like how playful her movement choices were. She was my favorite follower. <clears throat> I think the most skilled follower in watching was the follower. She had all black on. I think she had kind of like a burgundy uh, headpiece. Um, wow. I'm going to say right now, she is one to watch. I don't know her name but she is one to watch. It wasn't just because of her following skills. She nailed all four of those things because following and leading is not difficult. There are just some fundamental things that you have to know. If you know them, you've mastered the technique, obviously. And the hard part is trying to figure out how to amplify yourself so that you don't look generic and basic, right? That is the biggest problem with these competitions. And she exclusively differentiated herself more than any other dancer that was there, including the leads. She was my favorite um, follower when it came to the creativity, rhythm choices, skill sets. My favorite follower for the technique was the first one. She's got it's kind of a reddish pink shirt. Now, let me get down to third place. We get down to third place. And I'm specifically not talking about the leaders in terms of individuals because I just personally feel like they weren't all that great. They were good at the technique, but greatness is not just good at the technique. For me, greatness is what do you do with the technique that makes you stand out? What can you teach me as a master dancer, not just someone who doesn't know swing dancing? And I want to learn something that is from you, not a copy. So the thing that I liked, number three, couple. Woo! She had... Uh, I think she had a yellow, yeah, she had a yellow shirt. I think it's, is it orange shoes? Kind of looks orange in the, the thumbnail here. And he had like a traditional white shirt and gray pants. I loved their dancing. It was nice. It was safe. He seemed very mature in his dancing. He wasn't just rushing to try and move on his partner. He understood that he was a part of his partner and I never saw him violate that feeling of, uh, violate the technique where he gives energy to the partner and overrides the energy visually and kinesthetically. I didn't see any of that. And my eyes are trained. I can see when the leader is not as squeezing the partner's hands and doing too much stuff. He was what I would say a mature dancer, really good choices in leading. 
based on his movements. Nice and safe based on his skill set also. I could tell there were maybe a few limitations on moving the body naturally in movements that were outside of the swing out. But he used that to his advantage, his advantage to do swing outs well and controlled. That's why I put them in third place on his part. She was great because I didn't feel like she, she had a lot to say, but she wasn't like rushing, like rushing to say it ahead of him. She stayed with her partner. She was not rushed. They were collectively one unit, even though he didn't diversify a whole lot uh, of the movement. That's really cool. That's really cool. It takes a tremendous amount of restraint to be able to do that if you have the skills to move around and do a bunch of things. So I really liked them. They were third place. Second place for me. This couple, they stood out the first time I saw them. And she had, she had like gold pants on with the black shirt, nice glasses. I just liked her attitude. I liked the way she was going with her partner. You could clearly see they both had different personalities. And she wasn't just trying to compete against her partner. She was, she was working with the technique, but yet embellishing her partner's personality. She wasn't just trying to over, override what her partner's energy was doing. Right? I felt like they were dancing together and not dancing for me as a judge. Liked her footwork. Really liked she was doing. I can't remember what spot it was. She did something that was really cool. Uh, yeah, it was like at 309. She did this little hand plant thing. And I'm like, thank you. I could see it. I, I could see what she was doing and I could appreciate it because the rest of the time she wasn't trying to just say like, look at me. Look at me, ladies. Look at me. <laughs> she wasn't doing that. So thank you. That was really awesome. Now, I got to tell you, I really liked this leader's energy. I, I think a lot of it uh, goes to that hair. He's got a lot of hair dangling in the front. So if you've got hair like that, it makes you want to throw your hair around and kind of kind of get into it. But I don't know if his energy would remain the same like that if he got a haircut. I don't know if it would have affected me the same way. But I will tell you, I did like a lot of his artistic choices. He omitted a lot of basic steps, uh, like triple steps. And he decided to add, to add in some syncopations and, and various footwork shapes. I like that kind of stuff. That helps me see more than just the technique, which is basically ground zero. We, we haven't really built anything other than, yes, we can dance and it works. So although there's only two moves, we have left and right, he was showing me different dynamics and angles of that so that I could appreciate who they were as a dancer, as a couple, as a unit. Because clearly they're just one body and they had different emphasis and personalities uh, while working together. And I appreciated that. I really did. I almost had them in first. They were, yeah, they were my second favorite couple. Now my first favorite couple... I think most of this, oh, let's see. Yes, it was a follower. She's got like black, it might be like a navy, like a navy dress. She's got uh, yellow hair. People call it blonde. I like to call it yellow. Yellow hair or taupe hair. The leader had like a taupe suit. It's like tan, bald head, beard. I really liked them the most. I liked them the most. He was being goofy and being silly, and I think that's his, his personality in dance. And I like the fact that I, I could not see any visual cues that made me think of someone else. And that in itself is something to be recognized. Beyond just being able to do the technique like I mentioned, you've got to do something above that. And I think from what I saw, they went well above those basic necessities. And so I got to tell you, I didn't like all of the artistic choices that they made together as a partner, as a couple, but I will tell you, they went hands down on the choices that they made. And I think that's fair as a judge because it shouldn't just be about everything that I like, all of the artistic choices that they made. Of course, I'm looking at the balance of how well they can do the control part at bare minimum. I'm also looking at some timing of how well they can craft their movement to really elevate the music. 
to make me want to appreciate it more and maybe even buy the CD because of their dancing. But then I look for that third quality, which is distinction and creativity. What do you do that looks different than everybody else? Those are the qualities that I look for. And even with those three, I might not like the choices that they made artistically. That's fair enough. And that's, that's my own personal bias that you will hear nowhere else but here on my channel, folks. I tell you the truth. You can't go to an event and just ask them, why did you select me? Or why did they get in first? You're not going to get a coherent reason. You're not. And most of the time, like I said, it has to do with our own personal taste. And I'm just telling you up front, they won first place in my mind, even though I did not prefer the stylistic choices the entire time. I'd say about 60% of the time, 70. I really enjoyed it. So what do you guys think? I love this. This was fun. Uh, never been to this event. Uh, I think I've seen a few of these dancers, but I'm telling you, I had a great time watching them. And I really hope some of those followers that I mentioned stay in the game. We need people with unique personalities to really shine and blossom. This is the time where an art form can remain stagnant and homogenous, or it could, have, it could blossom in new directions to allow people to express themselves to inspire generations hundreds of years from now. That's what I really hope to see. Now, if you are interested in learning how to swing dance, I encourage you to jump into a class. It is not as hard as it looks, and what you're seeing is not actually choreographed. This is something that is improvised, not all the time, but what you just saw was improvised. And I will tell you, I spent 10,000 plus hours trying to figure out how to demystify this dance so that I could communicate it to people who don't even know how to dance. They're like, I don't know how to like clap on beat or do any of that. Well, most of those things take time like most things in life. But the reality is, is if you understand the basic elements of swing dancing and can apply them with a streamlined approach that will enable you to fix yourself, you are going to accelerate your learning curve rapidly. And that's what I did. I spent a lot of years and time doing that, but I saved a lot of people a lot of time. And I want to do that for you if you are interested. So I would encourage you to check out my fundamentals membership in the description. It's changing a lot of people's lives, a lot of hard work I put into it, and it will show you basically what we teach to people in the wild. Show you how to teach Lindy Hop in 30 minutes to get people these concepts in 30 minutes. The hard part is processing those concepts. So you'll, you'll learn that, and there's, then there's about five hours worth of information to help you go through the journey of understanding how to fix yourself when you're dancing with various people. So check that out if you get a chance. I've also got some uh, about 30 other free courses for you to just check us out. Come see our, see our community. It's really fun. It's really awesome. You'll get a chance to get a taste of a lot of the creativity that we add in our classes. Uh, new moves, fresh ideas every single week to inspire you to grow, plat, grow past complacency and find your unique mark in the swing community. So with that said, if I don't see you guys in my class online, hopefully I'll get a chance to hear what your thoughts are on who should have won this competition in the comment section below. Take care.